So who's seen me live before present? Anybody? <laughs> All right, so those of you who have, don't answer this next question. <laughs> what business do you guys think you're in? The people business. People business, what else? Money. Money? Anything else? Real estate. Real estate? Real estate? Okay, so these are the <laughs> exact things that people always think we're in. What I would say the business you're actually in in 2019 is marketing. So you do real estate investing, that's what you do, but what you actually are and need to be is a good marketer. So this whole presentation is gonna be really drilled down on how I'm getting all my joint venture partners through marketing and how you can start branding yourself as the expert to literally get all the money that you'll ever need. So how do you think that you find money partners? What are some ways that you guys think you'll be ending up getting money partners? Or how do you think it works in general? Any ideas? Colleagues? What else? Uh, networking. Networking, what else? Social media. Yep, so these are some common things of ways how we think we get partners. So a lot of us think we gotta do this kind of stuff, which is pitching, right? We come with a fancy presentation, we bust our laptop out, we start showing people the numbers and all the cool stuff. I would say that's the wrong way to do it. So this is the way that we all have been trained to do it, you know, the 1990s, the 1980s, whatever, this is how it was. You have to be convincing, you have to get a whole professional presentation together, and hopefully, convince that person. I keep saying that we're convincing because that's pretty much what it is, right? We go to networking meetings, try and convince someone. So those are all cool. I love going to networking meetings. I love going to events like this. It pumps me up, gets me energized. I get to meet some cool people like you who are, who are doing some serious things. But I would say you're not really going to get your partners from networking meetings. Sometimes you will. I've definitely got some partners from networking meetings. That's cool. But the majority of them, I would say, are outside of this room. Like I said before, they're just regular people who have home equity line of credits. We were talking about that earlier. Just people who have money, who have mutual funds that aren't doing well. You're, most of your JV partners are actually out there. They're not networking or at a, a events like this because we're all here for the same thing, most of us, is money. Right? We're all real estate investors, we need money. So if you go to a room full of people who need money and have no money, how, how is it possible to get JV partners from networking events all the time, right? So what I would say you should focus on is branding. So this is what I do. So I focus solely on branding, positioning myself as the expert, which I'll show you exactly how I do that, the whole blueprint, I'll show you that. For example, I had a cool thing happen just this week. I posted on Facebook that I needed some private lending. I hope I was on the right side of that securities talk. I think I was. <laughs> so I just posted, I'm looking for JV or for a private money lending. And literally, I got like flooded with uh, private messages. Like over $2 million honestly came my way with one post on Facebook just saying, I need money. Now, if I was just like an average Joe investor or I had one or two properties, what are the odds that you think that I would have got, you know, potentially $2 million in my bank account when I just said, I need money? Maybe someone would have been like, yeah, I got 30 grand over here. Maybe some person would have been like, yeah, I got 10 grand. But because I'm a fruitful investor and I've shown myself over and over again through marketing, everybody was like, yeah, man, I mean, I'll give you a fucking 100 grand, like for sure, right? So that's kind of what I want you guys to get to. So everybody asked me, Matt, how do I find partners? How, how are you getting them? How are you just getting all these people to give you money without really no vetting? How do you think I find all my partners? Again, for those of you who know me really well, don't answer the question. How do you think I'm getting all of my partners specifically? YouTube. YouTube. You've seen me before. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So all of my partners have come from YouTube, literally all of them. YouTube has made me more than $3 million in the past four years alone. That's from attracting uh, money for uh, real estate investing as a, for my realtor business. I've attracted so many clients uh, and have made commissions for that too. So all that combined, I've definitely made way more than $3 million just from YouTube alone. And no, I'm not getting paid from YouTube. This is just like straight income off of YouTube, right? So I've only got like just under 9,000 subscribers. So nothing too crazy to rant about, right? but I'm getting all this money off of YouTube and all these clients. So the game I'm playing is a little different. It doesn't really matter about subscribers or views. I love that, I'm still working on that. I wanna get more of that too, because it's cool. It makes me feel good. But really, what the game I'm playing is to make money off of YouTube. I wanna get them off, right? So have you ever wanted a deal but had no money to fund it? Anybody been in this situation? Right, there's tons of deals out there, got no money. Or maybe you have the money and you wanna grow your real estate investing portfolio, but you can't qualify. This is the position I'm in, right? I, I own too much real estate in Canada. I can't get another mortgage no matter what. Like I just, they just won't give it to me. I have too much real estate. I'm a, I'm a risk to them, which makes no sense, but that's Canada. Or have you had a great deal and you pitched it to a real estate investor, going back to that slide, and they said no. 
even though you, you said, hey man, the cash on cash return is gonna be like 20%, 25%, it's gonna cash flow this much, it's in this area, and the investor still said, no, not interested. Who's been in that situation? Nobody? Wow. <laughs> so I've been in a situation a ton of times, or it makes perfect sense. Even with my realtor clients, when I send them deals, and they have all the financial breakdown, it clearly says the cash flow is this much, and they're still like, I don't know, I'm not interested in it. And then I just buy it with my partner. That's a situation that I get into all the time because you're talking about the wrong shit. Honestly, almost nobody cares about the numbers, except for Mike Rosar's client, or partners. His people really care. <laughs> the reality is the majority of people don't give a shit. So if you're just talking about, yeah, this cash flow is this much, cash on cash returns this, people will get it. They'll nod along and be like, I get it, it's a good deal. But why aren't more people doing more deals, right? We, we can all find great deals all day long. We should be able to do deals every single week. How come we're not? All the deals make sense because you're talking about the wrong stuff. I'll show you exactly what, what to talk about. So what you're gonna learn today is how to get JV Money Partners to throw money at you, how to brand yourself as the solution so you don't have to ask for money anymore or try to convince your partner, you'll just get it, and how to target market to your ideal partner specifically. So I'll show you exactly that. This is the most important part of this whole presentation and your whole business coming up. So why listen to me in the first place? Real quick, I bought my first property at 22 years old. I now have 26 buy and hold properties and we've done a bunch of flips as well. On top of that, my portfolio is worth over $8 million of real estate. I've raised well over $10 million in uh, joint venture money in the past uh, just four or five years. And again, potentially another two million, let's see. And I'm also a realtor specializing solely with real estate investors in Kitchen Waterloo. So that's all I do, 100% of my sales. I don't sell the mom and pop house with the white picket fence. I only sell investment real estate in Kitchen Waterloo. So if you're looking for those type of properties, hit me up in my area, because that's all I do. So the business of marketing is changing, right? The, like I said, the way we used to do it in the 80s and 90s was flyers or newspaper ads or commercials or even, dare I say, networking events to a certain degree. But now everything's changing. It's all about online marketing and that's pretty much the main focus. Everybody wants to be at home. People are more introverted now. And you can reach people in a much broader uh, fashion. So if I'm going to a networking meeting, again, which I love, I can only connect really with like, I don't know, 10, 20 people per night and really find out who they are, etc. When I make a YouTube video or a social media post, I'm reaching a thousand people, maybe even more, 365, 24 seven, all across the country. Like I said earlier, I had a partner from Montreal, right, who just invested with me. I would have never have been able to get to him if I was going to networking meetings. He lives like six hours away, but my videos reached him. So the main thing to focus on is who is your ideal joint venture partner? So this needs to be your main focus. So again, stop marketing so much on the numbers because that's too broad. So what a lot of businesses do and a lot of marketing uh, people do still to this day, but especially like 20 years ago, is called shotgun marketing. So they send one message out to a bunch of people and hoping someone's gonna respond. That doesn't work anymore, that's 90s marketing. What we wanna do now is market to one specific person only and just target them specifically and alienate everybody else. I actually don't want you guys. I want him. I'm speaking his language. But if somebody else comes in and is not really like him, but says, I still want it, that's cool. But the whole marketing, if you watch carefully my marketing and my YouTube videos, it's targeted to very specific people only. However, like I said, I do get partners from other areas of life, but the message is very tailored. So what we wanna do is find out how old are they, do they have kids, how many, what are their biggest pains and pleasures, like really get to know exactly who they are, all about their life. So this is my ideal joint venture partner. His name is Paul, found his face on Google. But I have it on my computer, I have it on my wall actually, and I speak to Paul all the time when I'm thinking about YouTube video ideas, when I'm thinking about social media posts, I'm thinking of him. So Paul's kind of an average dude, he's like 45 years old, He's got two kids, a wife, he's super busy, he works a good white collar job, makes about $120,000 a year, but he's super busy and super tired. So he works all day from nine to five, at five o'clock he's gotta speed home, pick up his kids after school from daycare or whatever, drive them home, try and shove dinner down their throat by like 6 p.m., then he's gotta rush them off to hockey practice on Monday, on Tuesday it's the same thing, he's gotta bring them to ballet practice, whatever, bring his daughter to dance, he's busy all week. Then after that he's gotta rush home, at like 8 p.m. after their activity. He's gotta put the kids to bed around 9 p.m. Then he only has like an hour every night with his wife to really connect. So they're not really focused anymore on each other and their, and their marriage. So this is, this is the message I'm sending, so it's super deep. 
right? So every time Paul sees me traveling to Bali for two weeks in Hawaii, right? This year I was in Hawaii, Bali, we're going to Italy in three weeks. This is why I post these videos. I'm, I'm speaking to Paul. Paul can only go traveling like once a year, like Mexico, in an all-inclusive resort for like five days. So he sees me travel like six weeks a year. He's like, how are you doing that? That's what I want. I want more time with my wife, I want more time with my kids. That's the message I'm saying in my videos. I'm not talking about numbers. That's why none of my partners say, Matt, what's the ROI? They see me traveling, they're just like, I want that life, Matt. I want what you have, I want more freedom. When can I jump in? Well, I got this deal over here, whatever, I'm in. That's the message I'm sending. I'm not talking about numbers. So marketing equals emotions. Write that down, and that's the key thing. We're not talking about numbers. That's logical brain. We want to talk to the reptile brain. Fear, greed, pain, pleasure. That's what I'm talking about in my marketing. So here's a cool little exercise my coach. So I had a marketing coach a couple years ago to help me boost up my realtor business, which was really great. But I took all those uh, strategies he taught me and applied them to my joint venture business. So this is a cool exercise I want all you guys to do. I actually forgot to give you guys this. I'll give you guys this right now, actually. So I want you guys to fill this uh, exercise out. I'm actually going to do a live one-on-one, -on -one, I think, with Michael, because we were talking about this during lunch, because he's not sure about his ideal partner, right? So let's do a cool little exercise with you in front of everybody, but everybody else, you can hand these out, just pass them around. We'll do a cool little exercise. So while Dylan's pat handing that out, I'll draw this up real quick. So if you guys have a pen and paper, or a pen, sorry, bust that out. Or just do it at home, you don't have to do it right now, but if you have a pen, that's cool. So, Mike, what do you think your ideal partner is? Who are they? Let's just break it down. Who do you think they are? We'll just go high level first. Do you have a partner yet? Anybody that you've partnered with so far? Or are you looking for your first one? I'm working through my first one. They're, uh, they're a couple similar in, in age to me and my wife. No kids. Okay. Let's see if this marker works a little better. Yeah. So what age group do you think? Mid-30s. Mid Mid-30s? And you said no kids, so we'll just keep that in the back of our mind. So what is, let's give him a name too, or her. Doesn't have to be a guy. <laughs> What's your partner's name? What's your ideal partner's name? Is he a male? Sure, Sebastian. Sebastian, I like that. Targeted. Yeah, very. You're going full niche. Yeah. Okay, what does Sebastian see every day in his daily life? He's an electrician. Cool. What else? What does he see? So he sees construction every day. What does he see on those job sites? What kind of things does he see throughout his day? He sees other contracts. He sees uh, messes, rentals. Long hours. Maybe stress from job? Maybe traffic. 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 Ooh, traffic. that's a big one. I market to that one a lot. Mm -hmm. every, time I, every time I'm driving, by the way, and I'm in traffic and I see brake lights, I always Instagram it. I'm always like, oh, I can't believe people got to do this every day. Great marketing. But we'll get into that a bit. What else? Injuries. Injuries. All right, we can keep going on that another time. You can just keep brainstorming. What does he think and feel? in his daily life? Tired. Tired. That's a good one. Overworked. Overworked. Ooh. Pressure. I don't know how to spell pressure. It's terrible. <laughs> All right. What does he say every day in his daily life? <laughs> Fuck life. shit. No. <laughs> what does he say? I wish I had more time. I wish I had to work so long, right? You know what, you see where I'm going? What does he do every day? Hustle, right? Hard, labor? Yeah, like routine. Maybe not electricians. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you too, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys have it easy, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so those are the things he does. So the basically we want folks, and this is all cool, we can brainstorm and do a mind map. This is what this is called. So like my mind map on Paul is like insane. Like when I meet more Pauls in my life and they say things, oh, I, that I catch in my mind, I go home and write it down, right? So I can speak to that. But the biggest thing we want to focus on is the pain and pleasure. So let's focus on his biggest pains, which were some of these, right? He's tired, he's stressed out, he's overworked. That, I would say that's also a pain. And then the gain, what does he want? What's his gain? Right, maybe this is the opposite of the pain, really. So more time with family, right? His wife, kids, more traveling. Like my specific partner loves to travel, but he can't. <laughs> I don't know what I'm writing here. More travel, right? So this is what Paul wants, or Sebastian, sorry. So all of our marketing really is just hitting this all day. So you want to use all this, but we're just hitting this. So an example of this kind of marketing, like I said, is when I'm traveling, I'm definitely, that's why I make travel videos, by the way. I do it because I want to keep my memories and I'm also like a nerd with film and editing, I love that. But the main reason why I use it for my business is influencing my partner, Paul, to want to partner with me. Right, that's why I post those videos. So when he watches that, he's like, oh man, I can invest with real estate with Matt and I can travel more, cool. That's what my partner wants. So when you're marketing, figure out this more but this is what you're saying on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, any marketing, it's all this. We're not talking about ROI. When did I ever mention ROI? Right, never, really. Once in a while, I'll drop it in. Yeah, we can make 500 bucks on this deal, cool. But with that 500 bucks, you can travel to Cuba two times a year instead of one. Okay, cool, I want that. That's what, that's what I'm talking about in my marketing. Because what a lot of investors do is we talk about this shit. So pie charts, hey man, it cash flows this much, the ROI is this, check out my sweet bar graph. Your partner's like, what the hell is this? They're confused, and a confused mind always says no. We don't wanna confuse them. Unless they're super savvy, like Mike's partners, they, get, they love that, because they get it. So that's, that's their brain. So with marketing specifically, this is what it is everywhere, right? It's just noise. On commercials, we leave this building, we see billboards being hit in our face, we got bus ads, bench ads, we got Facebook ads, which I'm guilty of, I do those, but <laughs> we got radio, it's just marketing everywhere. People are just getting bombarded with marketing, so we've learned really well in the past 20 years as humans to block it out. When, everybody's tr when someone's trying to sell us shit, it's just immediate, the guard comes up, we block it out. So this is why the targeting is so important. I'm speaking Paul's language, I'm speaking Sebastian's language. So when I hit him with this stuff on marketing, right, John, who's 27 in college or whatever, he sees the market and he doesn't, doesn't hit him. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care about traveling more. Doesn't matter. But Sebastian's like, oh my God, if I could travel two weeks with my kids, like that's huge. But everybody else is, right? I'm alienating everybody else on purpose. I only want that message. So what you want to get really good at, because like I said, people are getting really good at blocking out marketing. They can sense it. We hate car salesmen. We hate realtors, right? We're realtors. How many people like, in every day, people out there hate realtors because we they think we're like this selly, selly people. It was, we just put up this guard in the past couple of years. Like, Some of their social media just like reposting. Yeah, don't get me yeah. started on realtors. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> realtors marketing. Yeah, realtors marketing is honestly the fucking worst marketing. But we got really good at putting this guard up. So we want to get rid of that. So we want to get really targeted. And to get through that guard, we do what's called indirect selling, or what I like to call soft selling. So it's really influencing which is why I'm on YouTube. I'm influencing people with the way I live, with what I'm doing in life, how I renovate my properties. I'm never really saying on YouTube, you know, you should partner with me because you're an idiot and I know everything, so you should just partner with me. Sometimes I do that, but not really. But I'm mostly just uh, soft selling. I'm showing, come check out my property, right? Which is why I do videos like this. This is why I, sh I shoot all my videos before and afters on all my renovations, which if you guys are doing renovations and you're not doing this, oh my God. Like bring people through the back end of your business. This is why I post before and afters. And even in these videos, I'm never showing, I'm telling, you should partner with me by the way. How we start the video usually is, hey, I'm standing in front of 123 Main Street. I just bought this property with a partner. We're gonna go renovate it. That's probably the only mention in the video about partnering with me. So I'm just dropping it, soft selling. Then we go through and then after I go through, they see how nice it is. Oh my God, Matt's got the system. He uses the same blue walls, the same flooring, the same baseboards. He's got the system on lock. I'm gonna go partner with him because he's got it all down. That's why I do this. And this is how I get all my partners. These right here, these kill. And also, like I said, these videos. This is why I do travel videos. 
right? Iceland, Panama, France, Mexico, Hawaii, Costa Rica, Bali. Where else have we been? Germany, France, everywhere. This is why I make these videos. So people watch it and they're like, oh, I want that freedom. Matt's always eating coconuts and trees and shit. I want that. That's why I'm doing those videos. Again, in those videos, I'm never saying you should partner with me, but the, in, the intent is I'm saying, you know, because of real estate, I get to do this for like six weeks a year. Do you also want that, right? That's why they're calling me. So let's get into the marketing now. And how do we do this exactly? Is by positioning ourselves as the expert. So see the rock here. He's super confident. He knows he's the best. He knows he can lift the most weight. This is what the, the mentality I want you guys to have. I want you guys to know that you're the best and then you're gonna show it. So how do we do that? We specialize in one niche specifically at the beginning. So I'm really big on specialization. This is again how I've made my entire career as a realtor and as a real estate investor. When I first started off, I specialized only with single family properties, only. That's all I did for like five years. Only recently I started now doing duplex conversions and multifamily, which is all cool. But I built my name all around single family. Easy, boring, passive, predictable, high quality. That's what Paul wants, right? That's also what I want. One thing I want to mention is, before we get into this, before you even choose one niche, because everybody's like, how do I choose? Which one? Student family, multifamily, rent to own, there's so many. Align it with your values. A lot of people don't realize how important that is. So I want to write that down because it's super important. So whatever your values are, that dictates which type, which type of real estate you should specialize in. So again, going back to me, I want easy, boring. When I'm on the beach, chilling in Costa Rica, I don't want phone calls about my property manager saying, Matt, your tenant messed up the house. They're not, they didn't pay rent, right? I don't want any of that. That's why I do single family, because it's so easy, right? Of all my properties, 26 properties, how many times do you think I've evicted a tenant? Zero. Once. And it was a very smooth rent eviction. One time, out of all those properties, all those nine years now, one time I had to deal with a shitty tenant. Everybody else pays the rent every single time. I never deal with crap like that. I'm never at the LTB or whatever, never. So that's, the, that's what I want. So those are my values. So going back to that, it, or if you want more money, more active income, you like to be in the business, you don't really see yourself slowing down or retiring anytime soon or whatever, maybe multifamily is the right for you. Maybe student property, maybe Airbnb is right for you. More cash flow in exchange for more work. It's up to you, right? Whatever you decide based on your values, that's the real estate you should specialize in for now anyway. And then only do that. Build your name around that thing. So going back to me, if you're a local expert, so I, I did only single family properties in one specific area. So for me, only Kitchener and Waterloo. And I still abide by that to this day. I almost bought a townhome in Costa Rica, pretty close, for an Airbnb. And I reeled myself in and said, no man, it's not part of my value, it's not yet. So I only buy properties in Kitchener and Waterloo, that's it. Don't talk to me about deals in Guelph, don't show me deals in London or Timmins, not interested. Only Kitchener Waterloo for now. Once you become that expert and you buy property, show your success. Like I said in those videos, the before walkthroughs, when you say that you only buy one type of real estate in one area, you're like the expert. Like I just said, when I say that on videos, I don't buy properties in Guelph, I only buy Kitchener. Why would anybody who's looking to buy investment real estate in Kitchener go to anybody else? It makes no sense. This is like all I live and breathe. That's what I want you to do. Whether it's in Hamilton, whatever, St. Catharines, whatever your market is. Shout it loud. So this right here is literally the blueprint to get super rich in any business. If there's anything you take away from this, this is the order of how you build your brand. Number one, we start off with blogs. So once you know what type of real estate you're specializing in and in what niche, you're gonna write a bunch of blogs on that thing. So if we're doing multifamily in Hamilton, let's say, you're gonna write a bunch of blogs on that. Top 10 tips on why Multifamily in Hamilton is wicked. Top five reasons why you should invest in multifamily in Hamilton, whatever, right? Why Hamilton multis cash flow so much? You're gonna write blog after blog, ideally 10 to 30 blogs. Start with that, bang them all out. Next thing you're gonna do is do video versions of those blogs. So everybody says, Matt, it looks like you're everywhere. Like I'm just seeing you everywhere, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you're on YouTube, you have your own podcast. How do you have time for all this? It's really not that hard because I'm only making one piece of content that I'm doing over and over again in different ways so it looks like I'm everywhere. It looks like I got this whole production team behind me. It's just me and Ali. And, but for a long time, it was just me doing all of this. So going back, we do videos on the blogs we already did. 
then we, I want you to start a podcast. And you're probably like, oh, how am I gonna do a podcast? I gotta like do interviews, I gotta find people to interview. I don't have time for that. No, you already did the videos. Strip the audio from the video, throw it on a podcast, now you got a podcast. That's what I do. That's how Ali does for me. Strip the audio, post it on there. Now I got, people are following me on, the, on their way to work. They're listening to me on their podcast. When I get home, they're watching me on YouTube. When they're chilling in their bed, they're getting bombarded with my face in their Facebook ads. <laughs> Then what you're gonna do is the videos that you made like 10 minutes long, ideally on YouTube your videos wanna be at least 10 minutes long, just helps with the algorithm. Make one minute versions of those videos you already did. You already did them. Take the best one minute sections of those videos, compile it, throw it on Instagram. Now you're on Instagram. Looks like you're everywhere. Then what I want you to do is take all those blogs you wrote, maybe you got 30 by now, take them all, throw them into a book or a report of some sort. Now you're a published author, holy shit. You must know what you're doing now, right? This is exactly what I did. And I want you to know what you're doing, but this is, the, this is what, like, the vision I want for you to give people, right? Then what you're gonna do is, in order to get that free book that you wrote, yeah, you wrote it, it's crazy, I need your email if you want that book, though. So they, they get your book for free and they go on your email marketing list. I don't want you to send them bullshit, though, and spam them. I want you to send them more free tips every week about what you just wrote about, maybe send them a video one week. Now you're giving them so much value. Why would they go to anybody else? And mind you, these people who are signing up for your book and watching your videos, if you're doing it the right way this way, they're in your local area or they want to invest in your local area. So now you're really positioning yourself as like the expert in Hamilton, let's say. They're not going to anybody else. They're coming to you when it's come time to partner. Second biggest thing I want you to take away from this when it comes to marketing. All those pieces of marketing that we just went over, this is the order that you must put them in when you're doing a video, a blog, a book, a podcast, whatever. Why, what, how, what if. Reason for this is there's four types of brains of how we take in information. There are the why people, the what people, the how, and the what if. Now the why people need to know why right away. You need to tell them why they should work with you, invest with you, etc. within the first Two minutes. If you don't answer that question, they're going to drop out. It's just the way their brain is. So you must answer the why right away. So if we're doing multifamily in Hamilton, why? It cash flows the most. That's what you want to say, right? If that's what's important to them. What's the what? The what people will wait around for like two to five minutes in a presentation like this, let's say, before they start dropping out. Unless you answer the what. So what? We're buying multifamily in Hamilton. We've already answered that question. How are we going to do it? These people are pretty cool because they'll stick around for like 20 minutes just to hear how. Well, we're gonna buy in these areas, we're gonna renovate them to look like this, we're gonna attract this tenant, and it's gonna cash flow this much. Okay, cool, now I get the how. The what if people are the best. They'll wait for this whole presentation just to hear what if. This is where we hit the pains of the game. Well, if you do invest with me, you're gonna get more time with your wife and your kids. If you don't, you're stuck working on the job site all the time, right? So this is the order of the marketing. Let's get into the real nitty gritty of each section real quick. The blogs, like I said, write about your own niche, your local areas, your strategy, and hint about partnering with you. Don't tell them ever. And again, going back to this morning, don't tell them the returns that they're gonna get. Just hint it. You know, if you do partner with me, you'll have more time to hang out with your kids or whatever. Just drop it in there. So how we set up a blog exactly, because you're probably overwhelmed now. I can't set up a blog, I'm not computer savvy. I have no idea how to do this. It's very simple. Get a WordPress account, so get a, uh, like a hosting service, so like HostGator or GoDaddy, I'm sure you heard of this. Set up a basic little website. A WordPress is really what you want. It's just the platform that works really well for us to write blogs and become this influencer. Your blogs need to be at least 1,000 to 1,500 words for Google to rank those blogs, that's really important. And then put links at the bottom. So this is called backlinks. This helps the SEO. So you could link to your Instagram account, your YouTube channel, your free book. Ideally, eventually, you're putting a link in there. So the more links you have on Google, basically, the more Google will boost you. And they want you to do that. So they'll, they'll give you more ranking. And if you get real savvy, eventually, when you do those video versions, you're posting those videos in the blog. Google loves that because you're recycling Google content, right? Google owns YouTube. So if you put those uh, the videos in the blogs, you're just like double ranking your SEO. So they love that. So do that. 
your videos. Like I said, do a video version of your blog, ideally over 10 minutes, and give without expectation. So like I said, I'm never telling people in my videos, you should partner with me. I'm just giving, giving, giving. And maybe at the end, I always say, if you want to find out how to partner with me, get the links below. Check that out. That's it. I'm just dropping it in there. Podcast. Like I said, do a separate uh, podcast for your blogs. Strip the audio. Just make a little intro and an outro for your blog. It's super easy. Once you strip that, vi that audio, you just add the intro, add the ending, done. Posted. Right? We do that. It takes Ali like 10 minutes to post a blog. Super easy. Once you got the template. Okay, social media specifically. So we'll get into that. Instagram is one of my favorite uh, social media, I guess, ways of marketing. So why it's good? Because it allows people to, uh, to connect with me and really see behind the scenes of my everyday life. So I love it because it's quick. YouTube takes a lot of time. We got to edit it, make it look all fancy. You, or Instagram, I just pick up the phone, do an Insta story of today. That's all I've been doing. I hope you guys were doing that too, right? Just showing people where I am, what I'm doing. People love that. They love like the HGTV feel, but behind the scenes. That's what we're going for here. So we can make one minute versions of the videos, like I said. So those are called posts. And then, or we can now recently post our entire YouTube videos, the full 10 minutes, 15 minutes on IGTV. So it's fantastic. So we're pretty much, Instagram's like a little mini YouTube. So we're, getting, we're hitting our people everywhere. And what you really want to do, in my opinion, is push your followers off of Instagram onto YouTube. That's where you're selling people is YouTube. When we're just sitting up here talking, people get to know me on these videos. That's how I'm getting the partners. So push them over to YouTube. And like I said, write, make a book or a report. That's just going to elevate you. When I wrote this book, this is my first book. I have three books. This book like, totally, literally changed my life. I started getting way more clients as a realtor. This is when I started getting more partners. This was like six years ago when I wrote this. And again, I just took the blogs. I changed the format a little bit so it made sense in a book format. Published that book. People thought I was like this Tony Robbins like author. It's crazy. And I was like 23 years old or whatever. Super powerful. And like I said, get an email marketing campaign. Some people want to get your books or your reports. They, they got to put their email in so you can send it to them, right? Although it's not you. It's all automated. So the best programs that I use or recommend, I use AWeber. It's 20 bucks a month. Or you can use MailChimp, which is free. Start off on that. Get a MailChimp account. You can set up your, your uh, drip marketing, which is just basically called email marketing or automated marketing. So it sends out one email a week or whatever. You can exactly choose when, three days after this, four days after they do this. It's crazy. It, it can get really nerdy. It doesn't have to be that complicated, though, for, for what we're doing. Or you can do click funnels, which is super expensive, but super savvy. So give your book for free if you get their email. Tell your compelling story over many emails. So when someone signs up to get my free book, I'm hitting them with my whole life story, basically, over the period of like a month. They get one email a week over a month. It just tells them why I do this, the, like the real why. I'm not talking about numbers, ROI, like really why. So I was broke when I was younger. I grew up in a broke family, right? I never got to travel until I was like 26 years old. That's what I'm talking about in my emails and in the book and stuff. So social media specifically, why? Because everybody's on it. We can give short and quick tips. We can talk about our experiences, both good and bad. Make sure you talk about your bad experiences as well. If it's all good, 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 it's going to sound a little salesy and sketchy. And post other people's content. So if you're not comfortable making your own blogs, making your own videos, at least post other people's stuff who are in the industry. And it'll still give you some you know, authority, but it's really way better if you make your own. But like I said, if you can't, or you don't, it's just not your personality, at least just post other people's stuff. It could be like the Toronto Star made an article about mortgage rates going up or something, whatever. You could post stuff like that. But like I said, ideally, you're making your own. Facebook specifically, this is really meant for life updates. We can post articles, blogs, and videos. We can post pictures of like when we're traveling or whatever you're doing. It's kind of like a catch-all social media platform. So people really want to follow your life, see behind the scenes. This is what Facebook is for. Instagram, on the other hand, is a little, mo little more narcissistic. I would say it's the most narcissistic platform of the social medias. So it's OK to brag and you know, be boastful. That's what Instagram is for. So show your daily life. Like I said, when I'm, I pretty much like document my whole daily life. I'm going here to pick up keys at the lawyers. And I'm going to my contractor to see my job. And I'm going home to play with my dog, whatever. 
I'm showing that like whole day. So people are following me throughout my life all day. They're getting to connect with the real me. Like I said, by the time they put their hand to work with me, they feel like they know me. This is what this whole marketing is really for. When I come to events like this or other social events for real estate, many times I walk into the room and people run up to me like, Matt, I watch you all the time. Like, I feel like I know you. I feel like we're friends. It's an incredible feeling. It's crazy how powerful videos are in social media marketing. It's insane. So you're networking all the time, 365, right? That's what this is for. And one thing I will note is that the stories will make you wealthy. So the posts and stuff, that's how you get more followers. That's awesome. Like I said, we're playing a different game here. We're not really focusing so much on followers. The stories is what's really going to make you wealthy. That's what's going to convert JV partners. Like I said, when I'm going through my daily life, showing my stuff, people message me all the time. Wow, you're doing such a good job on your renovations. It looks so good. It looks so easy. How can I get in? I want in. The stories are getting me partners. YouTube, I can't say enough about YouTube. It's also literally changed my life, second to the book. It's really great because we can do long form content. We can educate our client. I can just sit up here for 20 minutes and rap on a video and just do, say everything I want to do. I teach just, I can teach so much stuff on a YouTube video over 20 minutes, right? So people are engaged, they're listening to me. They feel like they know me. And also it's a good thing to show your personality. So again, because I don't have time to vet so many people, I only want people who want to connect with me. So when people watch my videos, they know right away if they're going to like me or not, right? We can sense people pretty quick. We can sense if we're going to jive with people or not. So when people watch me for six months, a year, two years, they really feel like, like they know me, they like my personality, they're in. The people who watch me are like, oh man, that Matt guy is really annoying. They're not going to call me, right? So it's cool. I'm vetting people automatic, which is what I want. I don't want to be dealing with everybody. So to wrap this up kind of quick, we want to focus on the benefits over the features. So what are the features with real estate? ROI, cash flow, you're boring people with the features. Okay? People get it, replace the floors, cool. What are the benefits? Here, that's the benefits. And hit the emotions. So again, we wanna hit the emotions, that's, the, that's all we're doing. When I make videos or posts or little jabs on social media, I'm just jabbing at Paul's pain. In this case, Mike, you're gonna jab at Sebastian's pain all the time. If he hates traffic jams, when you're in a traffic jam, you're gonna post a picture on it and say, I can't believe people do this every day. That's my favorite one. I use it all the time, probably once a month. Paul hates traffic jams. So when I post that, I say, thank God, because I invest in real estate, I don't have to sit in this shit. I'm jabbing at Paul's pain. And be super transparent. Like I said, be truthful, just be yourself. People can see and sense bullshit pretty quickly, especially nowadays. So just be yourself, people will like you for what you are or they won't like you. Cool, that's what we want. So to recap this quick, market to your ideal joint venture partner. Don't bring deals, bring pain and pleasures. Become savvy at marketing, online marketing specifically if you can. Super important, if you can't do it and you have some budget, hire somebody, right? Hire somebody like Ali to edit your videos, post them, et cetera. It's just gonna help you so much faster. Be real and vulnerable. So that's kind of the end of my presentation. I do have a course on all of this. I know you guys pay a lot of money on this, so I don't want to talk about it too much. So my course is usually 500 bucks, but like I said, you guys paid a bit to get here, so I'm gonna offer you my course for only 97 bucks. So if you're interested in that, it's just all about social media marketing, just what I'm talking about specifically here, what my strategy is, how I do it, how to post, how to make a blog. It's like six hours long. You can access it anytime. If you want that course, just let me know. You can find it on any of my social media links. Just click on it. It's yours for less than 100 bucks. That's my presentation. If you can find me, if you want to ch uh, check in with me, follow me on YouTube at The Fruitful Investor or on Instagram at Matt Pichet. Any questions? Austin? So when we're starting off with YouTube, and uh, I know you said not to really talk about ROI and things of that nature, really. Yeah. Um, but when you're presenting real estate content, people who want to learn generally like to see videos on, on stuff like that, right? Yeah. Someone who's just starting off, and if they don't have any property or anything like that, what type of content would you say makes sense for them to post? Because they can't start promoting the good life. They don't even have it themselves, right? Yeah. So then you're documenting the hustle of getting the good life, right? Maybe go follow somebody else's projects if you have none at the time and go follow their renovations, do a video with them. Um, and still, there's still a decent way to still position yourself as that expert because I still want you to figure out what your niche is. You still know if you're gonna do single family and GTA, let's say, whatever it is. 
you're the expert at that. So just keep posting videos maybe with other investors or just do whiteboard videos until you get to the point where you start buying projects and then do walkthrough videos. I'd probably recommend that one more actually. If you want to attract partners, just do these videos. This could have been like three videos, right? And then uh, post on that, do videos on your niche. Eventually people will start contacting you, right? So again, it, it will be harder if you have no properties, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it or can't do it. 100% you can. How many uh, properties did you have before you started JV? Before I started JV, I had uh, two. two. Two properties, I was like 24 years old before I got my first JV. Like I said before, I did my first JV at 30%, gave my investor 70, that was the last one after that. Everybody else was 50-50 after that, no problem. And I was like 24 years old at that time, getting partners who were 45. 50 or whatever, right, let's say. And they were like, yeah, man, I'm in, for sure. So if I could do it, anybody could do it, literally. Is it two million if you only want to do personally? No, now personally, my own name, it's like, I don't know, seven mortgages, seven or eight. All the rest are JVs off title. Yeah. Yep. Um, are all of your JVs just one partner, or do you have any where you split like the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the properties were one partner, except for one big one. Uh, that was two other partners, so 33 and a third for each of us. But every other one was just one person that brought the money, got the mortgage, easy, done. Yeah, I'd really recommend that strategy. Don't, like, don't get too overzealous, like, oh, I just, I just wanna buy anything. I'll take three partners to make this single family work. Just wait for that one partner, it's so much easier. And if you are gonna take multiple partners on like one small single family, let's say, you get 50%. Everybody else gets like 10% or whatever it's gotta be, too, right? Yeah. So like, you're talking about posting on WordPress. Is that just for Google searchability? Yeah. Like, for me, like I started doing this when I became more engaged. I was like, I'm just gonna write a bunch of articles. Yeah. But I've been like, my strategy was like, put them on LinkedIn, because I at least like, have a network. I'll do that too, yeah. And then I was like, taking those articles to like realtor.ca different sites and see sure. if you could take them on. Yeah. But now I'm thinking I should just take them and just put them on a WordPress also. 100%, yeah, everywhere, everywhere, yeah. yeah. And then in terms of my issue is like, I'm brutal at technology in terms yeah. of like setting up a camera. Like me and my team, we bought like all this camera equipment. We're like, yeah, yeah. killing YouTube this year. We, we hired a kid to do our videos. After. Yeah. So like, you know, realistically, I think like <clears throat> you should focus on where you're good at. For me, we yeah. should probably just be hiring, you would think. Right? For sure, yeah. yeah. Just hire somebody to do it. Uh, yeah, it's super easy now. Like you could just record a video on your phone. Like it doesn't have to be this crazy production. Eventually you could get there, but it really doesn't. Look at Ty Lopez. Like all of his videos, just a fucking phone and he's like crushing it, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter the production value. Gotcha. It might actually hurt you in some way, some people say. The more raw it is, the more cool, right? The more down to earth you seem like everybody else. So just a phone and then send that video to the, your editing guy. It takes him like five minutes, throw it up. Anything else? Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Matt.